There we are. Recording and Facebook Live, I see. Wonderful. So good evening, and I'd like to welcome you and call to order the March 23rd Port Orchard City Council regular meeting. And pursuant to the governor's stay home, stay safe order, the City Council will be conducting this meeting via Zoom this evening. A link to the meeting has been provided to the public and also numbers, a phone number has been provided uh, for those uh, without uh, internet access to be able to uh, call in to our meeting. So we please join me now in the Pledge of Allegiance as soon as well, Brandy's got the flag up. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a published agenda and it's lengthy. One of the things I'm, I intended to pull off was my state of the city. I, I plan to do that at a future work study versus at a long meeting like tonight. So are there any other modifications to this evening's agenda? Council Member Kachardi, do you have something? Yeah, Mayor, I would move to um, modify tonight's agenda by remove business um, number I, the approval of the supplemental agreement number two with contract number 072-18 with TR right away services. Um, just kind of a fairly large change order. This was not in front of the finance committee. And I think uh, having this in front of the finance committee where we can take a deeper dive with you and key staff would be great and then bring it back here in a couple of weeks. Is there a second to do that? Council I would Member second that. Okay, motion by Council Member Ash, or Council Member Kachardi, second by Council Member Ashby to remove item I and send it to the Finance Committee for further vetting. Any discussion of that? Okay, Council Member Rosepepe. Uh, just a question for Mark. Uh, this doesn't impact the project in any which way, does it? Dorsey? No, not adversely. Okay. Thank you, Mark. All right, Mr. Clausen, did you raise your hand? No? no. Just an itch. Okay. Happens to me too. It's a I'm wearing a mask. I know. All right. We have a motion and a second to amend the agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? The agenda has been amended. Other modifications? to this evening's agenda. Okay. Is there a to approve the modified agenda? Council Member Rose Pepe. Um, Mr. Mayor, I move to uh, approve the modified agenda as presented. Second. Second. Okay, I, all kinds of seconds there. I heard Council Member Rose Pepe and who was, Cindy, was, did you, was that you? Council, no? All right, Beck, I, I, maybe it was Beck, all right. So a motion by Council Member Rosa Pepe, Pepe and a second by Council Member Ashby uh, to approve the agenda as modified. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the agenda has been set for this evening and we are to our first citizen comment period and those for and it is it is for any items on this evening's agenda. We have a second citizen's comment period for all other items. So Brandy, is there anyone from the public wishing to address the council this evening? No members from the public, um, just an employee, Mr. Lang. Okay. So we will close the, the first citizen comment period and maybe we'll have somebody join us later. I know that we're streaming this live and uh, as, Brand, as Janine shared with us, we're, uh, our last meeting got a, about 180 views. So it's pretty exciting that we're reaching that many people. So we have a consent agenda that was published. Is there a motion to approve? Councilmember Leo Corelli? I move to present, I mean, to ex I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay. A motion by Council Member Lucarelli, a second by Council Member Rosa Pepe to approve the consent agenda. Uh, my being tongue tied is rubbing off on you. I hope nobody else catches it. So, any discussion of those consent items this evening? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? 
Hearing none, the consent agenda has been approved. We have no presentations or public hearings. Going to our business items, the first is the adoption of an ordinance amending the 2021-22 binding a budget uh, salary table. Mr. Crocker, this is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, business item 7A, adoption of an ordinance amending the salary table. Exhibit A of the 21-22 biennial budget, which identifies the personnel, personnel positions of the city as well as pay ranges. By this ordinance, the city council would amend this exhibit as adopted under number ordinance number 3520 to add a new position and modify existing positions. The proposed budget amendment is intended to amend exhibit A to create one full-time, uh, one FTE for a permit technician position, as well as reduce the permit clerk positions to two full-time equivalents. The net impact of these FTE adjustments is an additional 0.3 FTE from the originally approved budget. The intent of these adjustments is to promote a permit clerk to a permit technician position, as well as increase a permit clerk from part-time to full-time. Uh, the finance department would recommend adoption of the ordinance as uh, presented. Councilman Clausen. This was to mayor, members of the council. Uh, this uh, issue came before the city's finance committee and the finance committee uh, essentially approved or concurred with the recommendations and uh, it's now coming forward to the full council. So with that, I would move to adopt an ordinance amending exhibit A to ordinance number 035-20, the 2021-2022 biennial budget for the city of Port Orchard. Second. Motion by council member Claussen and a second by council member Tiener to amend uh, the budget related to the salary table. Questions uh, for Mr. Crocker on this? Just a quick comment. I just want to commend Nick for um, getting this and moving it forward. Um, you know, we're seeing volumes in, of, of permits like we've never seen before. And for us to keep up with the level of services that we all um, want to provide our community, uh, this is a was, a was a big move forward. So um, thanks for enabling us to continue to meet the needs of our of our of our community members. Okay. Other comments or questions? Yes, is, we found that hope this is the, the this is the most efficient way to add some bandwidth to the department without uh, uh, hiring uh, additional employees. So doing what we can. All right, you'll be voting on the budget amendment related to the salary table. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, the motion carries. Second item B uh, is uh, the adoption of an ordinance authorizing the creation of the position of a permit, permit technician. And this is uh, HR Manager Lund. Good evening. So in the last budget or last action, you um, approved the salary scale and the FTE status for the permit tech. And by this um, request an item on your agenda tonight. We're asking you to approve the general qualifications and duties uh, for the position that um, is provided for you in um, exhibit A of this ordinance. And as Mr. Crocker um, explained, this is creating the position of permit technician for the community development department. The International Code Council offers training and testing and actually a certification for permit technicians. So um, to be elevated into this higher level position, um, the certification of permit, permit technician would be a requirement. We are very fortunate in that one of our permit clerks in the department already has the certification and meets all the other minimum qualifications for the position. So it is the department's goal, um, consistent with the city's hiring practices to promote this individual to this position um, as soon as um, the position is authorized and the ordinance is published um, should the council so choose. So we're asking for council approval tonight of these um, general job qualifications. The full job description will be developed and you have given the mayor the authority to approve that once you approve the general qualifications and description. Happy to answer any questions. Council Member Diener. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt an ordinance authorizing the creation of the permit technician position for the general qualifications and duties for the position. Second. 
Motion by Councilmember Diener, a second by Councilmember Claussen to create the job, permit tech job description. Questions for Ms. Lund? It's pretty straightforward. Okay, you'd be voting on the creation of the per permit tech job description. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, the resolution has been approved. Uh, it was actually, it was an ordinance. So we're to item C, adoption of a resolution approving a contract with uh, Technical Systems Inc. for the 2021 SCADA radio communications design, radio licensing and implement implementation project. So this is the beginning of the Mark Dorsey show. We've got seven items in a row that are belong to Mr. Dorsey. So Mr. Dorsey, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor, Council Members. Um, on November 30th, 2020, the Public Works Department received results from the TSI Technical Services, Inc. Uh, radio Survey Feasibility Study that was contracted to perform for the city's SCADA system, which the SCADA is an acronym that has to do with monitoring our water and sewer systems, um, levels and things. Um, upon review of the study and confirmation by CenturyLink that copper service lines will no longer be installed for the city SCADA systems, public works staff has determined that radio communications for the city SCADA systems needs to be implemented soon. With current and future development of lift stations, water pump stations, it's important that radio communications be designed uh, for the public workshop so that current and future sites will be able to establish communications with the city's city SCADA system. Therefore, on March 1st, 2021, City of Port Orchard Public Works Department reviewed the 2021 MRSC consultant roster with the main category design and planning and subcategory telemetry SCADA for the 2021 SCADA radio communication design, radio licensing, and then the implementation project. On March 3rd, 2021, staff selected three qualified consulting firms from the roster, Charter Controls, Quality Controls Corporation, and Technical Systems, Inc., the qualifications of the three selected firms were scored based upon established criteria by three public works staff members. Staff determined that TSI was the firm selected based upon results of the scoring spreadsheet. On March 10th, 2021, the city received a proposal from TSI in the amount of $56,700 for the 2021 SCADA radio communications design, radio licensing, and implementation project. On March 11th, public work staff successfully completed the bidder's responsibility checklist for TSI. Staff recommends adoption of resolution number 023-21, thereby approving of the approving of and authorizing the mayor to execute contract C041-21 with Technical Systems Inc. for the 2021 SCADA radio communication design, radio licensing, and implementation project in the amount of $56,700 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. Councilmember Lucarelli. I move to adopt resolution number 023-21, authorizing the mayor to execute contract number C041-21 with Technical Systems Inc. for the 2021 SCADA radio communications design, radio licensing implementation project in the amount of $56,700 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. Second. Okay. Motion by Councilmember Lucarelli, a second by Councilmember Ashby. Are there any questions, Mr. Dorsey, on this matter? So Mark, will this change our existing system out or is this just for new systems, adding new systems? I think Mr. Lang can confirm or deny what I'm about to say, but this is a complete change out of our, our system. Okay. Council Member Rose Pepe. So that begs to the question is, uh, this is approximately 57,000 and it looks like uh, 97 had been allocated. So will there be some more cost next year or is this a, is this a good deal? Well, this is, there are other SCADA uh, related activities that we still need to do. Okay. So Tony Thank you. Came into the room. Tony, did I, did I misspeak? Um, this is an overall conversion. This isn't just new systems. This is designing a, this is designing a whole system, getting the licensing in place 
and then implementing uh, so that we go strictly to radio. Yeah, this, this will be the first phase uh, switching over to radio. <clears throat> uh, this part of it is the design for the shop, uh, for the head units. That way uh, our remote sites can actually communicate with the SCADA system. So this is just one piece of it, just to get us going. So more to come. All right, other questions for Mark or Tony? Yeah, this is kind of like somebody saying, nobody's gonna, you're not gonna service your refrigerator anymore and you gotta figure out what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. Before it quits working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, you'd be voting on a contract uh, to update the SCADA, the, the, the SCADA system to radio communications. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the contract has been approved. Which item D, adoption of a resolution approving a contract with Field Turf USA Inc. for the Van Z Tennis Court resurfacing project through Sourcewell. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you, Mayor, Council members. Uh, the city of Port Orchard has determined that the Van Zee tennis courts need to be resurfaced upon verification that the city is a member of the Purchasing Cooperative Sourcewell, formerly known as National Joint Powers Alliance, or NJPA, which is a Minnesota public agency. On February 12, 2021, the Public Works Department staff identified Field Turf USA, Inc. as an approved vendor services provider through Sourcewell contract number 060518-FTU, for supplying athletic surfacing with related materials, supplies, installation, and services. On March 2nd, 2021, Field Turf USA, in conjunction with its manufacturing partner, Benyon Sports, provided a quote of $25,107, applicable tax included, for a total installation price of $27,366.63. Staff confirmed the procurement process utilized by Sourcewell for this contract that it does meet the required process, uh, procurement processes and obtain the necessary documentation regarding procurement. On March 11th, 2021, the city's public works department completed the interlocal agreement purchase checklist for Sourcewell. And then on March 15th, 2021, the city's public works department completed the mandatory bidders checklist, responsibility checklist for field turf USA. Staff recommends the city council approve contract number C042-21 with Field Turf USA Inc. for the Van Z Tennis Court resurfacing project for the installed amount of $27,366.63, applicable tax included through Sourcewell contract number 060518-FTU. Councilmember Diener. Mr. Mayor, move to approve contract number C042-21 with Field Turf USA Incorporated for the Van Zee Tennis Court resurfacing project for the installed amount of $27,366.63, tax included, through Sourcewell contract number 060518-FTU. Second. Motion by Councilmember Diener, second by Councilmember Chang. And this is a body of work that uh, we were prepared to do last year, but uh, this time last year, uh, COVID hit us and we, we tapped the brakes on a number of expenditures. And by the time we were comfortable with expenditures, again, the, the, the window to do this type of work had, had passed. So if I remember correctly, it, uh, Tony can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, we're, we're replacing the nets and the, and the stanchions that hold the nets up. And we're also gonna stripe the courts for pickleball. Uh, we're seeing quite a bit of pickleball play out on the about course. So, uh, yeah, we're actually this week we're going to be replacing the anchors for the tennis posts uh, before they come in and do the work. That way, uh, we could put brand new nets up, new posts, uh, new surfacing. Yeah, it's going to look great. Yep. Councilman Burroughs, Pepe. Tony, uh, thanks for following through on this project. Just out of curiosity, how long will the courts be down? Uh, I haven't got that from the contractor. I presume probably for close to a week at the most, hopefully. Great. Thanks. When all this is done too, I tend to, we've got a couple of benches sold down at the waterfront. 
uh, and one of them is replacing a bench that isn't a memorial bench. So I plan to repurpose that bench, perfectly good bench that's uh, uh, there and take it to Van Z. I see people quite often using folding chairs out of Van Z. So some benches there could, uh, I think will be well used. Council Member Diener. So this also reflects a request where we had a pickleball group come to the land use committee some a couple uh, probably about three maybe more years ago now mm -hmm. uh, asking that we acknowledge pickleball as a growing sport and we have seen quite a few um, people out there playing pickleball how does six pickleball courts mesh with two tennis courts Will there be uh, they nets? can play they can play sideways on each side of the court so you can have four that way and then you can also play with the normal net the other way so it's so it's actually striped for six if they wanted to and if they wanted to play their own way they got to bring their own nets like we're correct. saying that's correct lots of lines to keep track of <laughs> other questions all right you'd be voting on the approving a contract with field turf usc usa for the Van Z Tennis Court Resurfacing Project. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, the contract has been approved. For the item E, adoption of a resolution approving a contract with Katie Isaacson and, and Associates for the 2021 Utility Financial Program Project. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you, Mayor Council members. The city has identified the need for a 2021 update of the city's utility financial program, including an update of the water capital improvement plan or CIP, updating the water capital facilities charge CFC to match the CIP. A lot of acronyms, but I did spell them out and make associated amendments to the Port Orchard Municipal Code. Accordingly on February 11th, 2021 and pursuant to RCW 3904-155, City's Public Works Department established a list of qualified contractors from the 2021 consultant roster for main category financial services and the subcategory rate studies. Uh, and it's an attachment to the staff report. Um, after staff developed the relevant scoring criteria and reviewed, scored, and ranked the qualifications of the three consultants selected from the roster, Katie Isaacson Associates, FCS Group, and KLJ Financial Consulting, the city's public works department identified Casey, Katie Isaacson and Associates as the highest ranking firm. Public works staff then met with Katie Isaacson and Associates to discuss, clarify, and develop the project understanding. On March 10, 2021, the city received a defined scope of work budget and project timeline from Katie Isaacson and Associates for the project in an amount not to exceed $28,000. Staff reviewed the proposal and finds that it meets the needs of the city and the budget authorized. Staff recommends adoption of a resolution number 026-21, thereby approving contract number C038-21 with Katie Isaacson and Associates for the 2021 Utility Financial Program Project in an amount not to exceed $28,000 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. Councilmember Lucarelli. I move to adopt resolution number 026-21, authorizing the mayor to execute contract number C038-21 with Katie Isaacson and Associates for the 2021 Utility Financial Program Project for $28,000 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. Second. A motion by Councilmember Lucarelli and a second by Councilmember Diener. Any questions for Mr. Dorsey on this matter? Councilmember Chang. I don't have a question so much as a comment, and I wanted to thank Mark for the scope of work. Um, I was looking on page 106 of 171, the fourth item where they're talking about the water and sewer rates. And I was pleased to see that um, it sounds like they are reevaluating the structure of the water rates so customers could have more control over the water bill, and this could promote co conservation. Um, I know that we've had discussions about that in the past. And so I'm thankful that this is included in this scope of work. Yeah, I, I was gonna point that out that in the staff report, we didn't pick up that this is also including the water and sewer rates and associated conversations around, you know, 
tiers and how we bill and you know we'll be going back through that process so it is included in the the amount so thank you for pointing that out memory serves me well those are painful conversations everybody's got an opinion yes they are but necessary all right other questions for mr dorsey or comments All right, you'd be voting on the approving the contract with Katie Eisenson uh, and Associates for the Utility Financial Program Project. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Contract has been approved. To item F, approval of the purchase of two Cornwell sewage pumps and replacement parts from Pump Tech for the Bay Street sewer lift station. Mr. Dorsey? Uh, thank you, Mayor Council members. On February 16, 2021, the Public Works Department established a list of qualified contractors from the 2021 MRC vendor roster, Exhibit A attached, main category equipment, subcategory pumping equipment for the purchase of two Cornell sewage pumps and replacements parts to replace the failing pumps at the Bay Street sewage lift station. That's the one over there in front of Bay Ford. On February 17th, 2021, and pursuant to resolution number 019-17, section five bid procedures, the city's public works department identified four qualified vendors from the roster and sent each qualified vendor request for bids for the purchase of the two Cornell sewage pumps and repair parts. The city received the following responses from Pump Tech Owens, Seattle Pumps and Triangle Pumps. Um, we actually didn't get responses from Seattle or Triangle and Owens they actually didn't provide Cornell pumps, so we're down to Pump Tech. Staff confirmed that Pump Tech is a qualified vendor for the for this purchase. This purchase relates to a city staff public works department project and consists of the city's procurement policies and applicable bidding requirements under state law. Uh, budget authority is already provided um, for this uh, purchase, and the city's uh, procurement policy require council approval for this purchase as the total price exceeds the $35,000 threshold. So staff recommends that the city council approve the purchase of two Cornell sewage pumps and replacement parts from Pump Tech for a total purchase of $42,973.26 applicable tax included. Councilmember Chang. I move to approve the purchase of two Cornell sewage pumps and replacement parts from Pump Tech Inc for a total purchase price of $42,973.26, including applicable, applicable sales tax. Second. second. Motion by Councilmember Chang, a second by Councilmember Clausen. Questions or comments? Mr. Clausen? Just a quick question, Mark. We've used Pump Tech before in previous purchases, haven't we? Yes, we've used Pump Tech quite a bit throughout our system. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Council Member Diener. Are Cornell pipe, uh, pumps still considered kind of state of the art or are we getting into stage of life issues? No, I can let Tony respond, but Cornell pumps are the right pump for the, the project. We were looking at Von Chopper, but Von Chopper would have, which is Von Chopper is the state of the art, um, but Von Chopper would have required uh, a complete electrical upgrade redo. So we're gonna be able to get, um, deal with the clogging issues with these Cornell pumps without having to do a complete upgrade of the electrical system. Other questions? All right, you'll be voting on the purchase of two Cornell sewage pumps and replacement parts from Pump Tech. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, the purchase has been approved. We're to item G, approval of amendment number two to contract number 032-18 with BHC consultants for the McCormick lift station two project. Mr. Dorsey. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council members. And just uh, to let you know, item 7G and 7H are closeout related, closing out pump station two and 
closing out the well 13 project under its current form. So on May 8th, 2018, the Port Orchard City Council approved contract number C032-18 with BHC Consultants or BHC for the project's design and construction administration, construction management support services. Um, on March 13th, 2020, the Public Works Director authorized a time extension only through March 31st, 2021, thereby uh, BHC expended additional unanticipated budget during the final design phase. At that time, it was thought that these design modifications um, that were made, the project's overall budget could be managed to reduce both the construction administration services and uh, the construction contract. Unfortunately, additional, additional efforts were needed in other CACM areas to accomplish the reduced construction budget and does not require additional budget authority to complete the remaining work items within the construction administration's scope of services, such as the review and finalizing of all as-built plans and the creation of the operations manual. Um, I will point out that as anticipated, the total project cost expenditures um, resulted in an overall cost savings though of approximately $100,000. So what that basically meant is we went over in the CACM, but it ultimately did result in saving of the overall project uh, cost. So staff recommends authorizing the mayor to execute amendment number two to contract number C032-18 with BHC Consultants LLC for the McCormick Woods lift station number two project construction administration construction management support services in the amount of 33,500 for a total amended contract amount of $562,000 and extending the contract expiration date to May 31st, 2021. And the project itself is basically, we're in final punch list uh, items and the system is operational. So like I said, this is a closeout. Council Member Rose Pepping. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to authorize the mayor to execute amendment number two to contract number C0. 32-18 with BHC Consultants, LLC for the McCormick Woods Lift Station Number 2 Project Construction Administration slash Construction Management Support Services in the amount of $33,500 for a total amended contract amount of $562,000 extended the contract expiration date May 31st, 2021. Second. Okay. Motion by Council Member Rosa Pepe, a second by Council Member Lucarelli. Do we have any questions of Mr. Dorsey on this matter? Nice job getting this done, guys. Thank you. Much needed infrastructure. Good to see us get some of the stuff done. Okay, with that you'll be voting on the amendment number two to contract number. 032-18 with BHC Consultants for the McCormick Cliff Station 2 project. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone po uh, opposed? Hearing none, the amendment is approved. For the item H, approval of amendment number two to contract number 039-18 with BHC Consultants for the Well 13 project. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you. And this is another BHC large design and construction administration project. On June 26, 2018, the City Council authorized the mayor to execute contract number C039-18 with BHC Consultants LLC for the Well 13 design permitting bid support and construction administration construction management support services. On August 18, 2020, the City Council authorized Amendment 1 for additional CACM support services to address unforeseen changes in conditions, uh, primarily the well drilling overruns. In January 2021, the city's public works and finance departments met with State Department of Health to seek additional DWSRF or drinking water state revolving fund lo loan funding to help with the overall project cost overruns anticipated and learn that DOH would not be able to provide additional funding assistance because of the water rights foster delays that are impacting the State Department of Ecology. Those discussions uh, illuminated the city's inability to bring the new well online by the end of 2021 as required under the current DWSRF agreement. As a result, the Department of Health has requested and staff agrees 
that the current Well 13 DWSRF project must be suspended until such time as the foster water rights issues are resolved. This is accomplished by closing out the current project. Once the water rights issues are resolved, the city will then be able to apply for a new DWSRF uh, for new funding uh, to complete the fourth and final phase of the work. DOH, DOH fully supports this approach and plan of action. As a function of the now needed project closeout, additional work is needed by BHC uh, to wrap up uh, the recently completed third phase of work, which is the Maple Street and bringing the unfinished fourth phase and final phase of work to a viable point of completion. This work will allow uh, for seamless continuation when the project resumes in the near future. BHC has provided an estimate for this work in the amount of $27,000 to successfully close out the current Well 13 project or basically mothball it in the preparation for its pending restart. Staff recommends that the City Council authorize the mayor to execute amendment number two to contract number C039-18 with BHC Consultant LLC for the Well 13 project in an amount of $27,000 uh, for a total amended contract amount of uh, $1.282 million. Is there a motion? Council Member Diener. Mr. Mayor, I move to authorize the mayor to execute amendment number two of contract number C039-18 with BHC Consultants LLC for the well number 13 project in the amount of 27,000 for a total amended contract amount of $1,282,110. Second. I had a motion by Council Member Diener. Was that second by Council Member Picciardi? Okay. Questions for Mr. Dorsey? Council Member Diener? Maybe just a little bit more about where we are with Foster. <laughs> Not where we want to be. It's in the legislature's hand right now. And this, yeah, it's causing us delays on this well, the ability to transfer water rights at 11, and it's not allowing us, well, the developer isn't going to move forward on well 12 out of McCormick Woods without water rights. So um, I would say it'd be nice if it was wrapped up by the end of the year, but um yeah, we are. We've got a monthly project meeting and, and our status report on it. It has to be finished before Jackie Brown retires. That's what we know. Yeah, yeah it's it's complicated. So um, feel free to join in on a, a future meeting when we talk specifically about water rights. Um, okay, did you vote yet? No. No, I was attempting to answer the question. Councilmember Rosa Pepe, did you have a question? No, so that that impacts our ability then in the whole big scheme about um, solving our issue with Bremerton water. Absolutely. It, 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 I don't want to sound like Chicken Little, but it potentially impacts the entire state of Washington on a statewide moratorium. So this is an important an important topic. Um, we've even elevated at the state public works board as a lobby, as a, as a, uh, as an item for our lobbyists. Yeah, it's on our, uh, our lobbyists uh, work plan. They're helping us with this to the best of their ability. Okay. Other questions for Mr. Dorsey? Okay. You'd be voting on. Approval of amendment number two to contract number 03918 with BHC Consultants for the Well 13 project. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the amendment is approved. We're, we uh, pulled item I, so now we are to item J, approval of amendment number one to contract number 075-20 with Rice Fergus Miller Inc. for the 2020-2021 City Hall Improvement Project, taking it from 30% to 100% ad ready and PSNE and bid support. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you, Your Honor, Council Members. And I would like to point out to the Sergeant at Arms that it's only 709. And so contrary to my reputation, um, I think I've gone through nine items in less than 40 minutes. So 
With that, I will proceed. On October 13th, 2020, the Port Orchard City Council approved contract C075-20 with Rice Fergus Miller or RFM for the 2020-2021 schematic design, 30% city hall improvement project. February 16th, 2021, at the conclusion of the schematic phase, RFM presented to the city council, the Port Orchard City Hall reskin project. Our team, RFM team is now ready to advance the project to the 100% ad ready PSE and bid support phase and has provided a scope and budget for that phase in the amount of uh, $394,676. Please recall that on January 31st, 21, and on February 7th, uh, 2020, uh, the City of Port Orchard Public Works Department published a request for qualifications uh, for the 2020-2021 ad ready 100% PSE City Hall Improvement Project. Therefore, the city is able to directly award this next phase of work. Staff recommends authorizing the mayor to execute amendment number one to contract number C075-20 with Rice Fergus Miller for the 2020-2021 City Hall Improvement Project, 30% to 100% ad ready design and bid support in an amount of $394,676. Or closet. Mr. Mayor, I move to authorize the mayor to execute amendment number one to contract number zero or C075 20 with Rice Fergus Miller Inc. for the 2020 2021 City Hall Improvement Project, which would bring it to 30 from 30% to 100% ad ready PSE and bid support in an amount of $394,676. Second. Motion by Councilmember Claussen, a second by Councilmember Lucarelli. And I've already told Mark, and he's communicated with Rice Fergus Miller. Their first order of business is to bring us back a mock up of what the solar panel is going to look like. They are not gold wing structure at all. So that, those were horrible renderings, and that it isn't going to look like that at all. So that's one of the first things they're going to do is actually do some actual mock-up of what it'll look like and we'll, we'll bring that back to you guys to, to buy off on before we get too far into the uh, solar structure so we're not gonna look like sonic burgers we're not we're not we're not a drive through facility no council member lucarelli um in the project description on page 139 uh, of the rice fergus miller um letter i just wanted to double check that we are including chimes in our proposal, we have a new clock tower weatherization and we have new digital clock components, but I want to make sure that chimes are included or some sort of music projection capability. We, we have the capability. We have the capability. We need the music component of that, Mark. So just make sure that that's yeah, they didn't they didn't spell it out specifically, but it's part of the it's a package with with the the clock tower and everything. It's 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 all inclusive. So yes, it's it will it's in there. Just checking. Thank you. She's gonna hold you to that. I know. Christmas comes and we don't have Christmas music. You and I are both in trouble. All right, other questions or comments? Mr. Just a comment as a, as a point uh, for the Sergeant of Arms with action on this one. The council will have dealt with 12 items on tonight's agenda so far, so. In under an hour. Very, very good, council. Yeah. Um, we might get to the mayor's report before it gets dark. Who knows? It's crazy talk. So, any other questions about the city hall improvements? All right, hearing none, you'll be voting on amendment to approval of amendment number one to the Rice Fergus Miller contract for the city hall improvements in ad ready uh, PSNE and bid support. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none, the contract has, has been amended. No, are you still awake? Look at that. Kim came right on. He's he's the next item. Approval of contract of a contract with G12 Communications for a new phone system. 
This one's yours. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, business item 7K is the approval of a contract with G12 Communications for a phone system service. The city's current phone system has become outdated and is having maintenance issues. The city has been exploring options for phone system replacement since early 2020, uh, in which the IT department has followed all appropriate procurement policies and procedures. And in our procurement policy, there's an exemption to standard competitive bidding process for the purchase of telecommunication systems and services. The city provided reasonable and standard procedures uh, for technical evaluation of the proposals received. Uh, we identified uh, the qualified sources and selection for awarding the contract. The award was made to the qualified bidder whose proposal was most advantageous to the city with price and other factors considered. Um, and just as a side note for the full council, we did bring this uh, topic to the finance committee and we brought our network administrator in to discuss it further. We have been test piloting uh, several different systems. Uh, the G12 communication system we've had in pilot testing for about a month and a half now, um, which has uh, gone fairly smoothly for us. And so we feel comfortable uh, moving forward with this particular product. Uh, although we did consider all of the vendors uh, who submitted for the proposal. Um, staff would recommend approving the mayor to enter into a, an, an agreement with the G12 communications as proposed. Awesome. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the mayor to enter into an agreement with G12 communications to provide a phone system and services to the city. Second. Okay. A motion by Council Member Clausen, second by Council Member Cacciardi. Any questions of uh, Mr. Crocker related to the phone purchase? Go ahead, Mr. Diener. So if I'm reading the second paragraph I, correctly, this will allow people to work from home without having to use their own personal cell phones, which I know is a big deal with, with work from home people. That, that's correct. Yeah, under this uh, COVID environment, we've really had to branch out in our abilities to allow people to telework. And one of the uh, issues we ran into is people using their personal cell phones, landlines of that nature. Uh, so this will allow us to uh, better communicate through devices like our laptops, as well as city issued cell phones uh, through an app on the phone, as well as the laptop. So it gives us greater flexibility for teleworking. And so folks can actually use city equipment rather than their own personal. Other questions? Council member Rose No, I know you always look at, you know, best practices. I was just wondering what other cities or companies that we benchmarked with on this well, we tested one other program that didn't work well at all because uh, one element of this is that there's an app on your cell phone to port your phone number to. And I don't know if you guys recall a few months ago, I was talking to you guys and I'd have dropped calls all the time. And that was one of the products we tested and, and it just what didn't, didn't meet our needs because it wasn't, didn't do that element. Um, Noah, what other features did you look at? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point that the mayor raises. We, we did explore and test some other products that did not meet our needs. And in, in identifying G12 communications, uh, the city looked to a statewide agency entity uh, called ACES. It's a community for IT folks. And so we get to communicate with other um, IT departments throughout the state for cities, counties, special purpose districts. And we use this as a platform to discuss IT issues and get kind of recommendations and feedback of technologies that they've implemented, policies they've implemented. And, and so we use that network, if you will, to kind of vet out and, and see what other entities are doing. And so this was one of the recommendations that came out of those discussions with our ACES partners. Major difference here, our current Mitel phone system, we've got hardware in the server room that we're maintaining uh, that we purchased. Um, it was 60 plus thousand dollars, you know, six or seven years ago. Uh, it's becoming antiquated and this is cloud-based and we don't, we don't possess any of the hardware. We're just uh, leasing a or paying for a service uh, other than uh, potentially buying, we can either buy or lease the actual telephones. Uh, we have a choice there. For, the, for those that need it, many of us can use our PCs or we're using Zoom or Microsoft Teams too are all viable options now 
that uh, existed before, but we really didn't know how to use them the way we do today. Other questions or comments? Okay, you'll be voting on the approval of a contract with G12 Communications for a, for a new phone system. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the contract has been approved. So I'm not going to give the state of the city address this evening, uh, but let me jump into uh, the next uh, discussion item, which is the retreat agenda. We uh, had a little sidebar at the transportation committee this evening tonight. So the draft that you guys have has been amended once already, adding an, an additional item to the policy discussions. And it's uh, to add a, a discussion related to uh, a sales tax measure for, for road improvements. And one of, we're getting quite a few policy items on here. And so the recommendation, I am opening with a 30 to 45 minute discussion about the organizational assessment that we did last fall. And uh, possibly we should move that to the end of the meeting, uh, which frees up more time uh, for the policy side of it. And then if we run out of time, I'll take that, um, the, the organizational uh, assessment discussion to a future work study uh, or, or another a future, a second retreat possibly if we have later in the year. So um, would like to share that, have a discussion about that. But uh, I think it, of all the items on the agenda, that's, that's probably the one that could wait. So other thoughts on the, the agenda? Councilmember Rosa Pepe? Um, one thing I brought up at transportation uh, for other council members is this is a very ambitious uh, retreat agenda and the possibility that uh, I asked the mayor if possibility we could go longer. Uh, he said we have a contract, but maybe we could go 30, 30 minutes longer. Um, my other question I had, and I'm sorry I didn't bring it up to you earlier, Mayor, is that where we have the uh, council, city council generate ideas on diversity, e equality, equity, and inclusion. Uh, mm -hmm. does that also discuss about recruitment in that in that area. Um, we are working to re uh, to recruit a diverse group, and I, I wouldn't be the. You've asked not to have staff at at, at this retreat, so I'm not going to have the HR person and and the the in the, the details that she did okay. she would dive into so if we can do that later then if we can move that down the road i appreciate it um so with that any other ideas or modifications you'd like to see um and on on jay's note there one of the things i think that uh, you know we have that um four way the 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 four I don't want to call it the four-way test, that's rotary, but remember we came up with a retreat a few years back and to have an equity and inclusion element to that, I think would be very important in the, in the things we, we, uh, we do, I, I think is what it's, um, and the actions we do, I think it is what that was called. It's tough to say, it's on the, it's on the wall in, in the conference room upstairs, so we haven't been there in a while. Okay, um, moving on. So I'll get that agenda modified and count some committee reports, economic development and tourism. Um, I'm not certain that you've met. I think yeah, your next, next meeting. April 12th, 930 AM. Yep. And utilities, have you met? April, since? April 13th. Okay, it's coming up. This is going fast. Land use, did you meet? April 14th. April 14th. All right, and uh, let's see here. I ran out of my paper copy here. Festival of Chimes and Lights. We did meet, actually, okay. and um, it looks like this year we are going to have to be careful about crowds once again. So um, we're planning as though we're not going to have gatherings, and the theme this year is a season of hope and joy. Um, as we round the corner of COVID and all that people have been through, we thought that that would be appropriate. Um, starting next year, we're going to be dealing with um, Christmases around the world. 
So we're looking forward to that and um, incorporating some of the different traditions from many diverse cultures. Um, we also have decided that the trees downtown when they get decorated all are going to need to have lights. Um, we noticed gaps this year in the, in the lights downtown and we, it's a small thing, but we think that'll make it more attractive. And we have decided not to have the giving trees. Um, again, it encouraged um, quite a few trees to become giving trees that weren't. And uh, we, we think that we need to make it clear that the trees need to stay decorated. And so um, we're gonna be just having um, decoration contests and not asking for giving trees. So that kind of sums it up. We're working on the details that we can make um, again to kind of compensate for not having the gatherings. Our next meeting will be April 19th. Okay. So from there we have uh, finance. Yes, we had a finance meeting on the, I believe it was the 16th of this month, um, where we went over essentially the sales tax receipts and the revenue from the refunds, uh, both of which are coming in uh, very good. Year to date is January and February's for year over year change sales tax is up by just over 16%. And in regards to uh, actual receipt compared to our budget, we're up almost 25% uh, over what we budgeted for sales tax. REIT uh, kind of led the uh, revenue sources for increases. We've had a, uh, apparently a couple very large acquisitions occur uh, early this year. So right now, year over year, REIT is about 128% um, over the same period last year. And uh, it's over about 400% in what we had budgeted. So as far as the revenue side, of course, remembering that this is only two months worth of revenue, um, it's coming in quite strong. Hopefully it'll continue to stay that way uh, for the remainder of the, at least the year. Uh, the rest of the things that we talked about, we talked, as Noah mentioned, on the uh, uh, resolution or the motion to approve the purchase of the G12 phone system. We talked at length on that. We talked briefly about some changes coming forth for court security, uh, which is an issue that we're going to have to deal with at some point as we reopen City Hall, those types of issues. So that's uh, pretty much what we covered at the last um council meeting and or excuse me finance committee meeting and then we with the action of taking the item off tonight's agenda we have i think tentatively scheduled um, a finance committee for the 30th of march at 4 p.m in addition to what we already have scheduled for next month so yes that's my report thank you for your report uh, we are to lodging tax now. Yeah, transportation. Transportation. Oh, they didn't. They don't do anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think, I think they met this evening. Matter of fact, we did. So I should be able to remember what we talked about. Um, the first thing we talked about is the Sydney sewer project. Um, the bids have come in on that, and so we should see a contract either at one of our next, um, maybe our next meeting, if not within the next couple of meetings to award the contract to get that sewer and road repair done on Sydney. Um, we also got an update on the Bethel Lincoln roundabout and that is on schedule. Um, they've been out working and Anyway, it's on schedule. Chris was um, pleased at how it's, how it's moving so far. And then we spent most of our meeting talking about the transportation improvement plan, the TIP. And it is something that we look at annually and it's 
will be part of, um, because we only update our comprehensive plan once a year, we start looking at the tip to make sure it's current. We reviewed it thoroughly um, today and it's going back to um, the department heads. They will fine tune it, then send it to the planning commission and then council will see it a little bit later um, with the rest of our comprehensive plan updates. But as we looked at the tip and we all know from our Oh God, what is it? The preservation maintenance, whatever the term of that is. Um, our transportation needs, all of our infrastructure needs are great. And we currently, the city of Port Orchard has a transportation uh, benefit district and we have assisted a $20 car tab. And we have done just a little bit of, had a little conversation about what if we um, terminated the car tab and ask our citizens if they would like the, to do the two tenths of a percent sales tax. And uh, we compared a little bit today, um, the income that would generate for us. And it was enough that it warranted us bringing that to the retreat for full council before we have any, so that we can have further discussion and just get an idea of council's feelings on that. And our next meeting will be the fourth Tuesday of April. And we meet at five o'clock. Thank you for your report. How about lodging tax now? Okay, uh, we had a meeting um, on Monday uh, it was one of those good news, bad news meetings. The good news being we have a very healthy uh, lodging tax uh, fund uh, currently because we have no funds going out uh, uh, currently. The, uh, everybody that was on the call, including Matt Murphy from the chamber, uh, were very understanding of the position that the council took uh, with not accepting any special um, event applications. Uh, I want to thank Brandy because she gave a little bit more background than what I gave, which was no, uh, and, it, and that helped a lot. And uh, so they're very understanding and they uh, would just like us to keep an open mind that should things relax, uh, that we might have festivals, uh, uh, some type of event uh, as the year goes on. And we said we keep an open mind. That was, a, that's my report. Okay. All right, um, Sewer Advisory. We're looking to schedule a meeting and we'll announce it at the next meeting. Okay. All right, and the council retreat, we talked about the date and made some modifications to that agenda. Outside agencies, Council Member Ashby, do you have anything to report there? You're muted. KRCC is still moving forward with the update of our countywide planning policies. That is taking um, a lot of time and energy from our community development directors, but we intend to have a draft in front of the full K, uh, Kitsap Regional Coordinating Council Board on May 4th um, for review. And then it'll go out for public comment and hopefully to the county uh, the first part of June to start the ratification process. So that's basically what we've been working on. Okay, thank you for your report. Um, outside agency, I, agencies I participate in, uh, the Gorse Coalition, the last few weeks we've had nearly 30 Zoom meetings with senators and uh, House representatives. Uh, Council Member Clausen and uh, representing Kitsap Transit has been there. Uh, virtually all of them with me. So I appreciate that, Councilmember Clausen. Unfortunately, the House and Senate budgets were released today and there is not a transportation package in those budgets, unfortunately. So uh, uh, more work to do on that front. Um, your thoughts, let's see here, other um, AWC, I've had a number of meetings with, from Senator Murray to, um, Derek Kilmer uh, related to uh, appropriations and the American Rescue Plan. 
And as I, I shared with you, there's 65 billion that was uh, uh, is direct in direct flexible spending to cities. Um, we likely only qualify. We're gonna we're gonna see likely uh, 3.2 million dollars in two annual installments in 22 and 23, 2022 and 2023, and. Um, Likely sewer or water infrastructure is are, are the, about the only ways we can. We don't have lost revenue. We don't have COVID expenses. So, um, so we'll we'll talk some more about that. Councilmember Clausen asked that I add that onto the retreat agenda, and provided we don't have to pick a project bef before then. Um, a lot of this is happening fast and furious, and all. Matter of fact, last Friday at ten in the morning, I learned that. There was a transportation uh, element application that uh, I need. We needed to have done by Sunday. So uh, then they, of course, about two o'clock extended the deadline a week. So uh, Chris, I know, is working on that. Um, so we do have our capital appropriation request in for the community center, and uh, I've, we're working on the one for the and the only shovel ready project we have that uh, checks the boxes is the roundabout for Anderson Hill. So that's the one we're going to submit for that. Um, and extend, you know, extended a, a mayor's exchange today, uh, and uh, it, uh, it my biggest takeaway from it, while all of us are different in all these cities, it is so interesting how so many of our issues are the same, or we've done that before, or we're about to do that. So I, you know. Um, they are they are very valuable uh, to attend, and I'm and I glad I'm glad I went and did that today. Um, I had a great meeting with Seroptimus uh, on Friday afternoon, and uh, they're interested in the naming rights to one of our uh, meeting rooms in uh, the community center, and they wanted to know how much, and I said more than a dollar and less than a million, and uh, we'll we'll see. We uh, you know. They want to have a place to meet every week, and um, so I kind of need to. Are you guys comfortable with that concept? I, mean, I think we would charge. We should charge. Look at what the annualized room rental be would be, and then it's something more than that. And I don't know what that something more is. And Councilmember Kachardi works in that industry, and I chatted with him a little bit about this yesterday. And it's probably not a percentage because. A, a, law, a small group meeting room that a percentage of that dollar amount isn't very much. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have this idea fully baked yet because it just got sprung on me Friday, but um, it's they would likely commit to 10 years, uh, you know, a 10 year commitment, make, make annual installments that would help with our uh, operating costs to the community center. And for that, they would have a room named after them for, for that 10 year period. I don't see anybody with a freaked out look on their face. So I'm, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll council member Chang. I, I think it's good that there is, I was gonna, I was thinking that if you had an annual naming possibility, but, but I like what you are proposing where it's 10 years as opposed to something in perpetuity because it seems that previous naming mm -hmm. things have been forever. And we know that that is just not the best uh, period. Yeah. So this is much more flexible. I think that's that sounds like a good direction to go in. Yeah. Jim Mayor, sure. just another thought I had on that. It's just, we move on again, we're a long ways from this. We're still in the midst of feasibility, but we just want to make sure that, you know, we're not treating any group unfairly if we are to, mm -hmm. you know, dedicate certain days of the week and times of the year for for 10 years where no one else could maybe have access to those rooms or that time frame. Just so just something to consider that there's equality amongst all the different user groups with you know fair access to dates and times yep. fair enough um where am i at mark's got something to share and i won't steal his thunder i i have an obligation to report uh changes to job descriptions and we changed one for the summer hires that uh, we've, we've got posted right now and it relates to just uh, renaming the position to reflect uh, the, now it's called uh, pub, the seasonal public works employees and the 
more accurately describing what they do, which is primarily uh, uh, routine parks, maintenance, cleaning, and emptying trash is, 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 is primarily what they do uh, out in our park system. Um, the, the county is, um, where am I? So the park survey. Um, I, I've heard from four of you uh, on which sign you like. Two of you like the pop, uh, which is Port Orchard Parks. And two of you like uh, Imagine Port Orchard Parks. So um, I only plan to produce one sign. Is there, the, those of you that haven't given me any directions, do you, of, of those two, do you have a preference? Um, one thing that council member, when I talked to council member Claussen about this, he offered up his um, marketing person to look at the concepts and uh, maybe inform the decision, uh, help to form and inform our decision. Um, what, so is there, is there somebody that hasn't voted want to give me their thoughts? I, I didn't vote. Um, and I would, if, if those were my two, I would prefer the Port Orchard Parks, the POP. Uh -huh. The other okay. one that has the word imagine in it, I think that ties too closely with the Imagine Port Orchard campaign that went on with the community mm -hmm. center that had absolutely nothing to do with the city. So I think it would be wise for us to distance ourselves from that one. Okay. I'm partial to pop as well. Okay. All right. Sounds like it's pop. Okay. And then the only one I heard, you know, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten questions that I circulated and council member Claussen got back to me and just wanted some examples in the types of amenities in that open-ended question. Um, I'm told that we need to scale this down to about six questions. Do we wanna discuss this tonight or do you guys wanna dig that out of your email and, uh, and uh, give, you know, give me your thoughts on that? Are there, are there, so I can run through them quickly here. Uh, I think the first one is important. Which park did you visit today? And it would be a drop-down menu of all the different parks. So we need to eliminate probably two or three of these is what I'm getting at. Um, did you, how did you recreate today? Uh, what did you do at the park? And it's a, it's a free form cell. Uh, how did you enjoy your visit today? That's a scale uh, one to five or one to 10 probably. Uh, did you use trails or pathways? Yes or no? How important are trails and pedestrian paths to you, a scale? Um, what is your favorite thing to do outdoors in Port Orchard? And it's, it's a, that's a, a free right, you know, a, a free form cell. Uh, what amenities or improvements to new or existing parks would you like to see? And that's also uh, free form and council member Clausen uh, thought we should give them some examples like uh, you know, access to the water, dog parks, trails, playground equipment type things so that uh, we're not getting uh, things we would never consider. Um, what else uh, What else should we know about our par your parks visit? And that's a free form. And, uh, and the lastly is, are you a resident of Port Orchard? Yes or no? And maybe we need all of those questions, but uh, no, Council Member Diener? Uh, it, it seems like there's a couple that might be a little overlapping, perhaps even a little redundant with the okay. drop down and the free form. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, a couple up front, um, but I'd, I'd like to actually look at it and, and look at the email and provide comments as well. Okay. I, I encourage you to do so. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock with, with Josh. So if you could... I hate to put that on you tonight, but tonight yeah. or in the morning, if you could look uh, at that and get me your comments. Do that tonight. Council Member Cacciardi, I'll start with you. Yeah, I'll just, two questions that jump out to me that probably aren't that important would be the third one. How much did you enjoy your visit? I think that's, I don't know how much we're going to learn from that and what we're okay. going to do with it. Um, number okay. two then would be um, what's your favorite thing to do outdoors in Port Orchard? I think we'll pick up that information more specific to the parks question. So I think question number, I think that six could also probably be cut. Okay, so what's your favorite thing to do outdoors you think could be removed? 
I think okay. it should be removed because I think we're, we're gleaning that information off of other questions. Okay. All right. Good feedback. Councilmember Chang? I would just suggest that each of them have examples instead of too many freeform cells. Um, even if even if we add the other as one of the options, um, I think once you let people know what sort of examples we're, we're expecting, that might help guide uh, the input that we get. Thank you. Council Member Lucarelli? I think that what else should we know about your parks visit takes it a little too far because you've already asked what, how you recreated today and what did you do at the park? So okay. I think that's redundant. Okay, all right. Looks like I got it down to my six questions pretty easily. Thank you. And then I I'm, I plan to take John up on his offer if, and, and uh, marketing person. Yeah, he wants to say something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Mr. Clausen, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to point out the one question that you asked, or the last one. Do you live in Port Orchard? That mm -hmm. I don't think people understand where. Port Orchard is. Mm. Are you talking the city of Port Orchard or oh, Port Orchard? The city Port of Orchard goes, there you, go. you know, Mile Hill, Parkwood, you know, there's a lot of Port Orchard. Because mm -hmm. what we're, the purpose of that question is, are we drawing people into the city that they're spending dollars? So, all right, that's, that's good. I wasn't ignoring you. I was looking at my sheet. So, um, is is everyone going to know that it's recreate versus recreate? <laughs> yeah, maybe that should be a different verb. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, I think we beat this to death. All right, I'll move on to the rest, the other items in my uh, mayor's report. Um, I learned at, at the housing, housing Kitsap board meeting today that Kitsap County and, and Paulsbo are probably on the cusp of reopening uh, to the public. And uh, hopefully I'm, I'm not sharing something with to you, Scott, that you haven't heard from your boss, but... Um, and under the provisions provided for professional services. And so I came back, got to the office and I pulled, the, pulled those up or actually Charlie shared them with me. And there's three pages of things we need to do if we were gonna do this. And um, 19 items, we're doing most of them, but the very first one says, professional services are required to mandate that employees work from home when possible and close offices to the public if possible. That's the very first criteria, which is kind of counterintuitive to being open to the public. And so we, uh, we also learned, I also learned today that Bainbridge Island is planning here in the next couple of weeks is to opening city hall by appointment only. And I think that is probably a better model because we're serving the public uh, other than a few things like fingerprinting down in the police department. Nick's department at times has developers delivering large packages that with plan sets that want to be date stamped and then they want to walk over to the finance department and deliver a large check. Sometimes we have somebody that wants to pay a utility payment or a court payment with cash. Um, I think if we put a sign on the door and that way we're controlling how many people are coming and going out of the building. Um, so that's, I just wanted some feedback from you, but that's, I think, a, a better approach than just opening the doors and seeing what happens. <laughs> I think we need to ease in back into this. Uh, so I'm he seeing heads nodding up and down. So uh, we're going to work on a, a, a plan here uh, to, to market that and, and, and share that with the public that uh, I think by at least if no later than the middle of April, I think we'll be open to the public by appointment only. And then from there, as further restrictions are relaxed, that way we're, we'll uh, then open City Hall back up even farther. So I think that's a good, good step. 
Um, Cause I'm not certain that all employees are ready to come back uh, into the office and, and, and be around other folks. So council member Diener. What does that model sound like? Is that, oh, I got a dog bark. Sorry, what does that model sound like? Where is that where somebody from Public Works comes to the front door and, and lets somebody in to meet with them? Or yes, somebody? okay, yeah, and then and then we're controlling they're not bringing five other people with them, you know, because part of the criteria in this we're supposed to require that the person that's here for the appointment comes by themselves unless they've got minor children with them or something. Um, so you know, while we were controlling how many people are coming going within the building and, and sanitizing areas after people have left. So, uh, which are part of the requirements. So I, I think it's a, I guess, good step in the right direction um, to provide. I, I, well, I think we're doing 95% of what we were doing before over the phone, the internet, uh, you know, the finance department's done a great job with some online tools and, and as other departments have. So I'm, I'm proud of what we're doing and, and how we've adapted, but uh, let's, uh, I think, ease back into um, serving the public back in person too. With that, that is the end of my mayor's report and it's dark outside, I'm sorry. Uh, staff reports, Mr. Dorsey, I think you got a big one. Why don't you, why don't you share that with us? Okay, well, I've got a couple. One is, in all seriousness, I want to thank the, the council for their continued support of the Public Works Department and the approval of all the contracts tonight. So I don't think that that does not go unnoticed over the years. It's, it's important that uh, the mayor and the council have faith in the Public Works Department. Um, we work hard to earn that and maintain that. Um, and then on the same kind of note, I want to let you know that the Tremont Street widening project has won the American Public Works Association Washington chapter 2021 project of the year award. So nicely done. They created, cool. they created a small agency transportation category for cities under 20,000 and project between five and 25 million. And we are right at 23 million and we're at 15,000. So we're kind of on the upper, upper end of that category, but, uh, I think it's well deserved. I think the, the from what I'm hearing, the project is well received by people driving other than the 19 or the one person that's had 19 accidents at South Kitsap in uh, Tremont because he keeps pulling in front of in front of somebody in the circle. Um, I'm assuming it's the same person because it's the exact same thing. But uh, other than that, I, I really think it's been well received. That, that and the one light fixture that everybody, as soon as we put it up, they hit and knock it over on that and corner. One elected official that likes to drive 80 miles an hour, oh. see how fast they can go through in his Mercedes. So other than that, um, it's all good. Oh, uh, um, Mr. Crocker. Uh, I don't have anything for tonight. Thank you. Mr. Bond? I just wanted to thank the council for the support in helping us get through this very busy period mm -hmm. in DCD. So uh, thank you for your support. Tony Lang, you're still there. We're gonna make you give a report tonight too. I don't have anything, thanks. Oh, you, Public Works is doing a lot. Yeah, I appreciate all the approval on everything that we're doing. You didn't notice they they uh, they rebuilt the the uh, the gates on the on the uh, Geiger side of the building down to the mechanical room. Uh, Scott Shenick uh, showed off his uh, woodworking skills and uh, rebuilt those gates that, that had fallen apart. So uh, that's that's one of the many things they've done here in the last few weeks. Oh, so and the, and I, I saw the Vactor truck for the first time driving through town today. That thing is. Uh, Pretty fancy, smancy looking. We've had yeah, it. It's getting a lot of use. That's yeah. for sure. Clerk Reinerson. I don't have anything to report just yet, but at the next meeting, we're going to have some website and laser fish updates. Wow. All right. Can't wait. Chief Brown. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to give council an update on the navigator. She's been in place roughly a month. Uh, so when she was uh, uh, 
working under contract from Polsbo. She was doing about 40 referrals a month, which was more than Bainbridge and Polsbo combined uh, in the last month. If you exclude the fact that even in the first 10 days, she wasn't even doing more than just onboarding. Uh, she has 68 referrals between the city of Port Orchard and the fire department. So she's doing uh, a lot of really good work. Um, she's also been doing a lot of outreach. We met with Rotary today. Um, she's, she's, she's doing fantastic work. So thank you guys again for making sure that happened. Chief Brown, what hours does she work? Is this a set schedule or how does that work? Because I know there's probably more demand than she's able to meet. Uh, yeah, so she, she's Monday through Friday, 8 to, 8 to 4.30. She also uh, gave a uh, presentation to the to Popsa uh, last week, and if you went to their website, I believe you could find a video. They rec they recorded that Zoom meeting, so okay. if you want to uh, see her give a presentation, I think it's it's out there. And if you can't find it, uh, uh, let me know, and I'll dig it out of my email. Uh, yeah, and we've actually just posted a video that uh, Matt Murphy in the chamber did um, interviewing her, I believe, last week, and that is on uh, our section of the website. Perfect. So even better, you can find it on the city's website on the police's police department's page. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Yep, of course. Ms. Archer. Uh, nothing to add. I was going to speak to those proclamations that you, you took care of all of that. So. Okay. All right. We're to the good of the order. I just wanted everybody to know because I did Mark's video today and it's Tuesdays and I'm trying to dress it up. So I put a tie on again this week. So it's tough to see unless I angle the camera down. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that I, I got a tie on. Councilmember Kachardi, you got a good of the order? Well, we skipped over the second citizen's comments. Oh, we did. I'm terrible. But I do have for good of the order, but I'll wait. Okay. All right. So Brandy, do we have any citizens? Wanting to provide comment. We have one member in the attendee section, which is Jackie Brown, which I'm assuming is the city employee. She is. Other than that, that's all we have. Okay. Does Jackie want to provide public comment? And she can speak if she wishes. Jackie, do you have anything to share this evening? Uh, no, other than I had computer issues during the transportation meeting, so missed part of that and only recently got signed back in. So, But my computer's working now. That's a good thing. Well, we did talk about you earlier uh, when questions came up about the foster program and that you can't retire until you resolve that. So, Oh, did any do, does anyone have questions about foster that you would like to know? Um, at a high level, because I know it's a complex issue. You could, uh, Council Member Rosebeth, he was asking about it. So if you have a, anything to share. Council Member Diener, I think. It was Council Member Diener. Okay. Um, it was a council member. Okay. Certainly. What was your question? Uh, what was the question? Well, my question was kind of what is the state of foster uh, as we know it today? I know it's affecting everybody, but um, it was sort of a high flyover. Okay. Well, um, as far as foster in general, uh, we haven't gotten word yet that uh, they have renewed the, um, the, the task force, um, but the word on the street is that it's going to absolutely be renewed because none of the fosters have been able to submit yet. Did you, were you talking in general or about Port Orchard's program? In general. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. Right. Councilmember Kachardi and you're good of the order. Yeah, it's just an announcement uh, for the public that might be watching. The Kitsap Economic Development Alliance has their annual meeting this Thursday, uh, March 25th, 3 p.m. It's a free this year. This year, it's all electronic. So if you went to their website, you could register if interested. Councilor okay. Rosa Pepe. I'd like to uh, take time to thank the mayor and the council uh, for standing up the transportation committee. Uh, it's been enlightening, and I'd also like to thank Mark and Chris, uh, because as you can figure out, uh, as I keep saying this over and over again, we've got a great uh, start with the TIP, but you know we don't have all the funds, so the selection of projects is extremely crucial to the city. So thank you for standing at the committee. It's helping a lot. 
and I and I guess on that I'd like to Jay I'd like to thank our um, our adopted public works staff member Nick Bond. Um, he puts a lot of time and effort into coordinating the planning side of transportation, and, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you, Nick. Sorry I left you out. And we got very close to hiring. We made an offer to what we thought was the perfect entry-level engineering candidate, and he worked at another city, and the other city made him an offer, couldn't refuse to stay. So we're back to square one. So, and Ian, Ian is out on, he's working two days a week. Uh, uh, he's out on his maternity leave. So we're uh, stretched pretty thin over there in public works right now. So, uh, somebody else, Councilmember Diener, was that you that raised your hand? Yeah, just go to the order. I will be gone. I'm planning on being gone this, the next two council meetings, the 6th and the 13th. Okay. I'm sure Brandy will get you added to be excused. And that for personal reasons or business reasons? That's for personal reasons. Okay. Spring break. Don't go down to Miami. <laughs> Words of wisdom. My kids are too young for that. <laughs> All right. Anything else for the good of the order? Well, it's eight o'clock. It's one hour sooner than I thought we'd be done tonight. So uh, good work, Mr. Dorsey, being uh, brief in your comments. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye.